Welcome to TCC family. We pray today's service ensures you walk closer to Jesus. Whether on YouTube or Facebook, we encourage you to subscribe and follow our pages to stay connected. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit the notification bell. We're glad you're here, and happy Easter. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk, obviously, about resurrection. But the title of this message is No Death, No Resurrection. Say with me, no death, no resurrection. Now, we all love the resurrection story, and rightfully so. It is the ultimate story of triumph in the entire universe for human beings. It exemplifies the limits of death. It gives us hope and its foundation uh, uh, um, of our faith. We know full well that Christ came to earth, born of a virgin, raised in the home of a carpenter for 30 years. After all this, he began a ministry for three additional years. During this time, he revolutionized the entire re region in which he lived. But the purpose of his life was not to live. The purpose of his life was to die. Amen? The purpose of his life was to life. His life was entirely sinless. There was no blemish in him at all. There was no sin. He was immaculate, perfect Lamb of God, whose sole purpose was to take away the sins of the world. We all know about the passion of our Lord, the betrayal of Judas, the denial of Peter, his being turned over to the Sanhedrin, being sentenced to die one of the vilest death, death on a cross. We know that there can be no forgiveness of sin unless there's a shedding of innocent blood. There has to be the shedding of innocent blood. He walked down the Via Dolorosa. If you have ever been in Jerusalem and walked down those narrow streets, you can do cobblestone streets built, amen. And at those times, they're still there as witnesses of the one who walked this earth. I've been down that road, but I was not. I could never take the place that he took for me. Hallelujah. After being beaten and bruised with a cross on his back, he was nailed to the very cross that he carried and was placed between two common criminals on Mount Golgotha. He finally expired after untold torment, spearing and thorn crowning. His final words to his tormentors was, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Even, even though he was completely 100% innocent, he still had in him to forgive those who were tormenting him. It was one of the biggest expressions of benevolence the world has ever seen. We know that he was placed in the tomb of Joseph or Arimathea in a tomb that had never been used. Imagine the sort of relationship Jesus had developed with this Joseph of Arimathea that he was willing to donate his very expensive tomb for the placement of the body of the one who had no sin. Joseph of Arimathea had no idea that the tomb would simply be a temporary resting place for the body of our Savior. His body stayed there only three days. This tomb was witness and the epicenter of an earthquake when the dunamis, death-stomping, devil-defeating power of God came and resurrected the body of our Lord that never saw or experienced corruption or decay, bacteria and insects that get attracted to, that bacteria and insects that get attracted to the smell of death to begin what they normally do, were not attracted but repelled by the perfection and sinlessness in this holy body of our Savior. On the third day, this tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea was vacated. Imagine that a tomb that was built for the purpose of decay, corruption, and finality. Yet this tomb became the source of renewal, vibrancy, beginning in life. What does Easter mean to all of us as believers Number one is the foundation of our faith. It is the foundation of our faith. And I quote to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if, there's, if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith is also in vain. Moreover, we, have, we are even found to be full witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he also did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You're still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we're of all, of all men most to be pitied. But we know that Christ was raised from the dead. We know that in order for there to be a resurrection, there has to be a dead body that has to be brought to life. I know this sounds 
like a no-brainer, but I want us to think this again. This is and continues to be an impossible event according to science and in the natural realm. This goes against the grain of the natural and the mundane. It flies in the face of seeming of the seeming finality of death. Number two, death is a necessary prerequisite for a resurrection. Death is a necessary prerequisite for a resurrection. Let us examine death. It is impossible to know or experience resurrection without the advent of death. In the beginning, God made man in his image and his likeness and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. This is called the Ruah. Death was not a factor in this original equation. God made Adam and Eve to tend and to work the garden and establish certain parameters man could eat of all the trees except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We all know the sequence of events. When the serpent came and seduced Eve and Adam with lies, Adam and Eve took it hook, line, and sinker, sinker, and ate of the forbidden fruit. Because of this, death gained legal entrance over, ma over mankind and all of creation. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, meaning Adam, and death through sin, through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all sin, for before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking, breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. Romans chapter 3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is, in fact, an involuntary death which all of mankind is born into. We have a sinful nature because of acts that were done by people we have never met or even known, right? It's amazing to me that Adam, whom I have never met, screwed things up for me and everybody else. It's true. Romans chapter 6 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So thus far, we have the breath of life for Adam and Eve, which means life forever without sin. Right? Adam and Eve messed up. So now we have death and curses, not only for them, but for all of their descendants, which means all of us here in this building and the entire humanity. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sin in which you formerly walked according to the, cur the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the wrath rest. The book of Ephesians speaks about our condition without Christ. Without him we were dead, without hope in this world, or the one after. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, when man made the decision to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, with this disobedience came death to all of humanity. Because of the will and voluntary actions of one man, the rest of us have reaped involuntary death and eternal damnation. We have all, we have all been dead in our sins and trespasses, but Christ paid the price for our salvation, and he came to give us life through the new birth. I quote to you in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his grace and mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living and enduring word of God. John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they have my life and have it to the full. John chapter 17. For you, for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. John 17 verse 3. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, Jesus Christ, to whom you have sent. And John chapter 20 verse 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Not only has Christ given us life, but he has made us alive with Christ. And I quote to you the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But because of his great love for us, 
God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace expressed to his kindness in us, Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ. Jesus to do good work, works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, all this is awesome, and as believers, we celebrate the new birth and the life of Christ that is within us. We were dead, but now we are alive in Christ. How many say yes and amen? Yes, amen. This is the place where most miss it. God has given us life so that we can actually choose to die. Let me prove it to you scripturally. Wait, you would say, Pastor, wait a minute. What in the world are you talking about? See, God has given us life so that now that we are, now we are faced with the same choices as Adam and Eve were faced with. Are we going to choose the path of disobedience that brings death or the path of obedience which brings life? Only alive people can make choices, not dead people. Listen to me. The choice is ours. In this resurrection day, I want to challenge everyone on the sound of my voice, all those who are alive with Christ, who have been born again, to rethink the purpose of your life with Christ, to understand the destiny and ability that this life of God within you gives you. Number one, it gives you freedom to choose. Freedom to choose. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with the eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy certain. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we're faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. First the death, then the resurrection. Say with me, first death, and then resurrection. Say it again, first death, and then resurrection. There can be no resurrection without a death. Then you say, Pastor, you've said it already probably at least 10 or 15 times, but... Uh, but Pay attention. Stay with me. Don't, don't disengage yet. Many try to bypass this simple requirement of death, and they want to have a resurrection. Resurrection is attracted only to death. Resurrection is attracted only to death. The scriptures speak about us being dead in our sins and trespasses. I quote to you out of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. To the one where the smell of death to the other the fragrance of life, and who is equal to such a task? Second Corinthians chapter 4. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For we who are alive are always being given always to death for Jesus' sake. We who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. Are you beginning to get this? I, I, I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm telling you what the Word of God says is very important. Where and how does this work? Baptism is the perfect depiction of what happens. It illustrates what goes on in the life of a believer. And I quote you in the book of Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that the grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of you who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We therefore, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into the death in order that Jesus, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that the old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, 
but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is pivotal. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as also as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you're not under the law, but under grace. Are you following me? And in Romans chapter, uh, well, the newsflash is out. You must die to your old way of life. You have been born again and have life so that you can die to the sinful nature. Amen? You can make the right choice that Adam and Eve squandered in the Garden of Eden. Sin shall not have dominion in your mortal bodies. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In him you are also circumcised in putting off the old sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by human hands of men, but with a circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins in this, and in the circumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins, having canceled the written code with his regulations that was against us and stood opposed to us. He took it all away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed powers and authority, he made a public spectacle over them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to religious festival or new moon celebration or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things that were, that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the price. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen in his spiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. He has lost connection with the head from whom the whole body is supported and held together by its ligaments and sinew grows and God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why as though you were still belong to it, you submit to its rules. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish with use because they are based on human commands and teachings. So, is it possible to be alive with Christ and then choose to die? Absolutely. If we make the wrong choices, we will die. The divine nature of God comes with a new birth that gives us access to the supernatural power of God to triumph over sin and disobedience. Here is the key to this message. Christ had a mortal body, but there was no sin in him. He overcame sin and temptation again and again without sin. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He did the overcoming here on earth in the midst of a fallen creation, in a place where he had the cards stacked against him. But because he lived and overcame in, his fallen, in this fallen environment, it gave him authority over sin. See, he overcame not with his divine nature, but with his human nature but in his earthly nature. In the same way, when we, when we have been born again, we have the life of Christ on the inside of us. This life comes with all of its authority, abilities, and responsibilities. This divine life of God inside of us gives us the ability to overcome sin in this fallen world where the car cards are also stacked against us. There can be no resurrection unless there first has been a death. We all love to talk about the resurrection, how awesome it is, which in fact it is. Yet we fail to acknowledge or even make the obvious connection between death and resurrection. It seems in our culture, not wanting to offend any sensibilities, that we want to go from life to life. See, we get born again into a new life, but we get born again and have life so that we can choose to die to sin. Because the moment you receive Jesus, he forgave all of your sins up to that moment, but you're still in your flesh, and you're still facing temptation. You're facing that, 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 that drive to, to iniquity, and you have to, now that you're alive with Christ, you have been empowered with the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of holiness, to so say no to sin. But that is an act of your will. Not that you are alive. You have the power of God on the inside of you that works through you. Are you with me, church? 
We want to participate in his resurrection, but somehow I neglect that we must die with him first. Yes, Jesus died for us. He took our place. He died the death of a terrible sinner. And because of, of that, we have been exempted from undergoing such fate ourselves. Yet scripture after scripture, God makes it so clear that we must participate of his death. The scripture on baptism makes it clear that it is symbolic of us dying to our old way of life. It is dying to the unrighteous way of life. If we get included in Christ's in Christ sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection what Christ did on Easter morning was a matter of life and death, not only for him, but for all of us as well. Philippians chapter 3. And be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him. Becoming like him in his death. This is the Apostle Paul. I said he had had an encounter with the risen Christ. He became alive, but he said, I am crucified with Christ. Yet it is not I that live, but Christ who lives in me. He chose to stay on the cross, crucify his desires, his flesh, and the old man. Our flesh at times wants to crawl off the cross. But see, so many of us want to crucify the devil and rebuke the flesh. How easy is that, right? But no, 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 no. The devil we rebuke, but it's this old flesh that we need to put on the cross day and day and day again. That's how we die. That's how we, we have to be alive to make those choices. How many say yes and amen? We cannot do it without the power of God in our lives. You cannot, you cannot know the time, the Christ type of resurrection until you have first known the Christ type of death. First Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God of our Lord, a God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last times. In Romans chapter 8, but if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Are you following me? The choice is clear. See, therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you receive a spirit of sonship. And we, by him we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God. God's children. The choice is clear. You either put to death the sinful nature or the sinful nature will kill you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're hard pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. He's talking about believers now, not. <laughs> we always carry around in our body, the death of Jesus, so the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body, here and now, not someday in the future, right here and right now. This is what's going to separate a true church of Jesus Christ who chooses to walk this world dressed in white, it's not perfection. The only perfect one is Jesus. But we are a bride that chooses to follow after our Savior, and we choose to die to sin on a daily basis so that we could be alive with Christ. Therefore, we carry death around so that the life of Christ may be manifested in us. How many are getting it? Verse Peter chapter 3, but in, the, in your heart set, Set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason of the hope you have. But do this with gentleness, with respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you, your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He has, was put to death in the body, but made you alive with by the Spirit through whom he went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago when, he, when God 
waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. It is only a few people, eight in all, who were saved through the water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but a pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 7, so my brothers, you also died to the law, to the body of Christ, so that you might belong to one another, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit to God. The cause, what was the cause of death for Christ? Now, as a physician, I have been to several autopsies. It's very important. Why? Because that really is a control what was done while somebody was alive. Did we give the right medication? Did we make the right diagnosis? In forensic pathology, what was the cost? What, what it cost an individual to die? Was it foul play or was it natural death, right? But let me give you the... the the autopsy the, in the certificate, in the death certificate, it's listed the cause of death. What was the cause of death of Christ? Some may say crucifixion. Yeah, but actually it was his obedience. It was his obedience. The cause of death of Christ was his obedience. When he said, here I am, send me. Whom shall I send? He said, here I am. He was the lamb who was laid before the foundation of the world. His cause of death was obedience. My God, he was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Oh, Jesus. Death was, his, death was Christ taken out of his earthly body. Resurrection was his taken into his glorified body. In the, same man, in the same manner, our obedience is the cause of death of our sinful nature which is our ticket out of our sinful nature. This gives us the ability to resurrect with Jesus and become partakers of the divine nature. How many say yes and amen? You need to have a death certificate. The cause of death in your death certificate in the spirit needs to be obedience to God. Say with me, no death, no resurrection. No death, no resurrection. Revelations chapter 2, do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you that they will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. We were born into death, live in death, a spiritual death, so that we could be born again and get life, spiritual lives, so that we could choose to die to the sinful nature, die with Christ, so that we could be resurrected with Christ, the Zoe kind of life. Every time that after we have been born again, that we choose to put to death the sinful nature, then this gives us the right to partake of the resurrection with Christ. It's not, see, participating in the resurrection, there is a price. There has to be a death. There has to be, it, it cannot be anybody else. You, you have to choose to put to death. Say with me, it is I. See, this is where control, some people want to, Control, no, you shouldn't do this. No, no, no. You have the Holy Spirit. You got the Holy Spirit. You got the Word of God. God's given you a conscience. Amen. How many say yes and amen? So, our putting to death of sinful nature gives us a legal access to the resurrection power of Christ in our lives. There are many believers who, although they have been born again, are partakers of the divine nature. Their names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This awesome new life comes with a bunch of rights, but also many responsibilities. We have now become the sons and the daughters of God, and we, we get to keep our free will. Salvation does not do away with our, free, with our ability to choose. Now that we have the life of God, but as children, we can choose to obey or to disobey. This is a matter of life or death. How do we put this into practice? Well, let me quote you in the book of Colossians chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. See, we're looking to be revealed, we're looking to be go viral, but we choose to be hidden with Christ, crucified with Christ. Whenever he gets revealed, 
that's when we will be revealed. My God, this does away with some delusions of grandeur, doesn't it? Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, nature sexual immorality, impurity, loss, evil, desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, the wrath of God is come. You used to walk in these ways in the ones life you once lived. But now, but now, meaning that they're saved, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Whoa, let's stop right there. I hear people who don't want to be religious, therefore they cuss like a sailor. I'm sorry. No. My Bible tells me no. You let a wholesome talk come from your lips. Amen. Praise God. Because when our hearts have been cleansed and purified out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Praise God. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. See, you don't have a foul language problem. You had a heart problem. That's what's going on. So ask God to cleanse your heart. Think God's thoughts. Well, how do you think God's thoughts? Think Scripture. Read Scripture. Get the Scripture inside of the heart. Your word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against you. How many say yes and amen? This, I believe, is one of the most neglected things in the body of Christ today. Only live, resurrected people have the power and ability to put to death the things of the earthly nature. Can I have the worship team come forward? The miracle of, sal of salvation gives us new life so that we can put to death the deeds of the old life. Are you getting this, church? So, say with me, I am alive with Christ so that I can choose to put to death my sinful nature. See, you cannot, if you're dead in your sins and transgressions, you cannot put to death the sinful nature because death has no power. It just can't do. It doesn't have any authority. But when you become alive, God gives you, gives you the life of Christ so that you can choose to die with him. Amen. Not die for him because the sacrifice that he did was perfect. But because of that wonderful, perfect sacrifice, we have the authority and the ability to say no. Amen. Praise God. I just, I'm trying to encourage you, people. I'm trying to, you need to know what is at your disposal, your rights, responsibilities. Amen. Let's stand to, to, our, to our feet for just a moment. Say with me, no death, no resurrection. The miracle of salvation gives us new life so that we can put to death the death of the old life. Therefore, no death, no resurrection. Let me quote to you in the book of John, chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. She told them, I believe that you are the Christ. In Philippians, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but how much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation. Now, salvation is free. We cannot do anything to earn it, but we need to work it out. It's a difference. We don't get saved by works, but by grace through faith. Very, very important. But when we receive this amazing, wonderful salvation, there is a responsibility. We are empowered. We are empowered. Amen. Praise God. We get empowered. I said we get empowered. We get empowered now. So whenever sin comes knocking at our door, and it will, I guarantee you that it will. I guarantee you that it will. When it does, you say, old self is death. That old self that you're knocking to is crucified with Christ. You gotta go to the cross to find him. Come on now. Just like the empty tomb of Jesus, your old self is no longer there. It's on the cross. It's on the cross, crucified with Christ. And if you're crucified with him, and if you choose, now that you're alive in Christ, you choose to die with him, and you choose to continually die to yourself, to your old sinful nature, then you can participate of the resurrection Zoe life of Christ. Yeah. 
And lastly, Hebrews chapter 2. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Say with me, no death, no resurrection. I want us to close our eyes for a moment. Now that you understand that you have been made alive with Christ so that you can make the choice to be crucified with him. If you participate with him of his death, you will participate of the resurrection. People want the resurrection part, but they want nothing to do with the death. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot have one without the other. Because if you try to access only the good part, the benefits, then you're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. But when you're chosen, every time you say, Jesus, this is a hard thing for me. I cannot do this on my own. I need you, Jesus. I heard Pastor Bill, my pastor, was pastor of this church. He said, David, if you stay at the foot of the cross, you ain't got far to fall. Hallelujah. How many say, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord, I choose to love you. I choose to honor you. I choose to die to self. Are you with me? Are you with me? Lord, I choose you. I choose you. How many say, I choose you, Jesus? I choose you, Jesus. People are going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're going to come. Not to see how great we are, but to see a bunch of crucified people whose life is no longer their own, but who now are alive in Christ and who live for Christ and therefore, because they have chosen to die to self, the resurrection power with healing, salvations, the casting out of devils, all the authority. Do you realize that when you put to death, there is incredible access to life? I know I said this a bunch of times during this sermon, but some of you all still need to get it. Maybe you need to listen to this recording again. No death no resurrection and I'm inviting you right now to a funeral to self I'm inviting you to a funeral to self how many are willing to say yes Lord you know in the Old Testament when they brought a victim there had to be a sacrificial lamb or an animal and that animal the high priest had to approve of it and that animal was hung, was tied and hung from the horns of the altar. And if that animal was just limp, it was not worthy. But when that animal was trying to kick off and get off the horns of the altar, then the priest said, ha, oh, that's an acceptable victim. That's unacceptable. When you bring your flesh and you tie it with the word of God, and you hang it from the horns of the altar. I'm just trying to describe to you what we need to practice and do. We want to see more miracles. We want to see more salvations. It starts with daily choices that you and I, for all of us, listen, I'm preaching to myself. We're going to tie up our flesh. See, and it's not, it's not bruising our our, our earthly body no 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 it's the sinful nature that has its manifestation in our earthly bodies there is a difference I, I, I'm trying to end but but I, I just sense the Holy Spirit just are, are you listening to me so how many of us would choose to say you know what pastor I understand why I'm alive in Christ so that I can choose to put to death my sinful nature that is my ticket to participate of the resurrection power of Christ. Therefore, no death, no resurrection. No death, no resurrection. No death, no resurrection. How many, with every eye closed, 
How many here want to participate of the resurrection life of Christ? This resurrection day. Resurrection is coming to us. Resurrection, resurrection, resurrection by death and through, through death. Resurrection power through death to intentional death to self. Thank you, Lord. We're no longer our own. We have been bought with a price, the price of precious blood. So thank you, Father God, that you love us enough to speak to us. You love us enough to embrace us and to heal us and to have us understand your word. Father, it's not about us. It's about you, Jesus. Have your will, your way, and your purpose in our lives, Father, in the name of the Lord. Lord, we, we reject categorically any delusions of grandeur. And we want Jesus for you to be the supreme king and Lord over our lives, our families, in Christ's precious and beautiful name.